welcome to Love Where You Live, a monthly magazine of all the wonderful things that are going on in Sheboygan County and hosted by the Chamber of Commerce, the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. I'm Betsy Alice and I'm the executive director there. This morning I am very pleased to have with us Laura Rainitz, who is the executive director of Safe Harbor. Now Safe Harbor was the winner this year of our Chamber Champion Award for nonprofits, which is a significant achievement because I don't know how many nonprofits we have, but I bet it's over a hundred. Oh, I bet. Yep. So, uh, a prominent organization in town that does a lot of good, and that's what we're going to talk about this morning. So, welcome, Laura. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Yeah. You've uh, you've been doing this now six years. Okay. Yeah, I've been in the director position six years. Safe Harbor has been in Sheboygan for over 25 years. So we have um, a long history of serving the community. We started as a domestic violence only agency with help from community members in St. Nicholas Hospital. And then okay. later added sexual assault services. And now we're a dual agency with a 15 bed shelter in Sheboygan serving victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. Okay, wow, so that's a, you know, how many people do you serve in a year? Well, it depends on what we're talking about, but um, in our shelter, we serve about 200 people um, a year in shelter. So a lot of people think that's the biggest piece of right. our business. It's, it's certainly the most expensive, but we serve the fewest indirect services there. We serve over 700 families, individuals and families with direct service um, who never see a day in shelter. Um, they don't need it. It's not something that um, they need to heal from domestic violence. Um, we also have prevention education and we have, I think last year we served or presented to with educational topics like healthy relationships, um, good touch, bad touch, and then adult um, presentations in the community. Over 7,000 people we served last year oh in prevention. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, in a variety of settings too, I would imagine. Absolutely, our prevention work is mostly done outside of our facility. Um, we take over 5,000 um, hotline calls a year. So that's, I mean, it's a significant amount. So numbers are rising, which is great. Um, I don't, there's not a good way to know whether uh, the problem is increasing, right. I think, but what we believe is we're lowering the stigma to get help by being out in the community and talking more about it to wider ranges of people. And so people are feeling more confident to come forward and say, I'm not sure what this is, but something in in your presentation spoke to me that I I might have these issues and they're coming forward so wow. before it gets to be a crisis um, yeah, I, you know even, it's exciting even in my short time here with a lot of the the mental health kinds of discussions the community conversation that was held a couple of years mm -hmm. ago all those things have really brought it to the forefront and and I notice people talking about it much more frequently than they did before. That's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, it's a cornerstone of really of how we serve the community is really talking about it in ways that are understandable, that are not intimidating or frightening. So yes. I think for a long time, agencies like ours were secret locations and it was secret work, mm -hmm. which I think really led to the stigma of somehow being shameful or embarrassing. Mm -hmm. It is just something that occurs sometimes. Power and control shifts in a relationship. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't always start out that way, but yeah. So I'm glad to hear that you're hearing people talk about it, other agencies. Mm -hmm. Our community as a whole is very supportive of our agency and the work that we do. So yeah, I'm thrilled at the work we're doing. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah. And a lot of it's happened in the time that you've been there. Oh, um, well, I mean, maybe, but the groundwork was laid by the the pioneers in this in this movement so i i would never take credit for yeah. any of that yeah. i built off of other what other people have done in this community. oh of course yeah. and you probably have a strong board and you we have do. a lot of support in the community too we do this is an extremely generous community we are so grateful for the support we get from individuals and companies and organizations um, clubs schools everybody who really crosses our paths usually asks how can we help more and they do whether that's um, volunteering their time to help us file or help us clean up our yard our backyard yes, or right. plant plants or do direct service we have two um, really ways to serve our community or, or our clientele is direct service or indirect service 
Um, and we do a, a variety of different things um, in that way. Well, you definitely have an ambitious and inspiring mission statement, which I want to read. Um, it says, Safe Harbor provides prevention, intervention, education, and outward reach services to empower individuals, families, and the community to live lives free of violence. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty encompassing. I think you've already kind of given us a broad picture. What can I do, all of us can do in our communities to help Safe Harbor and to help this bigger picture um, so that people can live lives free of violence? Sure. So we're an empowerment agency. So what that means is we don't have a prescription for any person who's dealing with this in their life. It's different. Every single client is different. Every situation is different. So what we ask the community to do is talk about it more. Talk about it as if you, in a way that is, is, I have a solution. Why don't you call Safe Harbor? So understand it when you hear it. It isn't shocking. It's, yep, I understand that that happens. Why don't we put you in touch with someone at Safe Harbor? So refer. That's the first thing. Anyone can refer anyone to our agency. We have a, a 24 hour helpline. So we're, we're staffed 24 hours a day. You can show up at our facility 24 hours a day. So What, what is that number? It is 920-452-7640. Uh, and we can probably show that on the screen. Probably. So, yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Good number um, to have. It is a good number to have. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is, if you see something happening in terms of interpersonal violence, um, people in your life treating others with disrespect, um, without consent for th you know touching or things like that, we talk a lot about respect, equality, consent. If those three things aren't present, say something. Hmm. I saw an exchange that between you and you know your friend and your significant other, your boyfriend or girlfriend. I didn't really understand why. It feels like there's not a lot of respect there. Let's talk about that. Talking about those things, interceding and saying, you know what, that didn't make sense to me. Can you help me understand? Is a, is a way to give someone an opening to say, yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on here. So it's really being a supportive secondary person in someone's life who may have felt afraid to talk about it. Um, and I think the third way is really taking an active role um, in community work, in the work that we do, talking about it in your companies, in your clubs, making sure that everyone's aware of the services that we do. So it is really engagement. Right, and I, you mentioned earlier that you're available to do presentations yeah. at service clubs, at churches, all those kinds of gathering places. Yep, that's part of our prevention education um, program platform, is we'll come to basically anywhere and talk about a range of different topics of, from healthy relationships to interpersonal communication to really those, those, those three tenets, respect, equality, and consent. Those are the three things that we really believe have to be present in any interpersonal relationship, a friendship, a romantic relationship, mm -hmm. a, anything. So mm -hmm. we'll come talk about that. And I think it starts a discussion. Again, we're not prescriptive in the solution, but it really does start a community discussion about what do we want our organization to be? What do I want my relationship to be? What do we want our community to live by? And I, we think those are, yeah. are pretty strong things to live by. They are. It's almost like helping to create or to, to shape the culture and to improve the culture in the community as well as in the family, mm -hmm. you know, so that we support all of those kinds of behaviors. It is a cultural issue, a societal issue, domestic violence. It's not, it certainly is a private issue, but it is something that affects our community as a whole. It affects the workforce. It affects family relationships. It, it affects the stability and the mental health of the people involved on both sides. So it's critical that we as a community step forward and say, you know what, not in our community. We're going to do everything we can to support those agencies and those people who want to give and get help. Right. That's great. So, you know, it's, I know it's really difficult for people to come forward. We hear that all the time. So, so how can we encourage people to do that today? Yeah, it's, it's really tough. I think um, what I hear from our clients most is, when I'm ready, I'll come forward. And that is so hard to watch. It's such a hard power and control dynamics that are um, lopsided are really hard to watch with loved ones. So really what we say is be supportive, be there. So when they're ready, you can be supportive and, and help them get to where they need to be, whether that's Safe Harbor or 
a different place or a different right. family. I, it doesn't matter. I think what we see most is, and I'll say this, loved ones who are trying to be supportive tire of staying in a watching their loved ones stay in a relationship, mm -hmm. and then they stop being supportive. So I would say we need to all be strong and be there when that person is ready to come forward. What it looks like on the other end, so when you make a call to our helpline or when you come to our facility, it's different. It's completely anonymous. You can call and not give your name and not tell. Just talk about, say, you know, I just need, a, I need to understand this better. Here's what's happening. And what will happen is we'll say, our staff will say, tell me a little bit more about what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you get to really pace it out at, at how you're comfortable. It is all about your plan and what you need to do as a as a victim of domestic violence or sexual assault. So it's, we're not gonna tell you what to do, we're gonna support you in what you think you need to do and offer you resources and support. Mm -hmm. That's great. I, you know, I'm also curious, and I, I've always been, how, you know, it's so hard to raise money today. <laughs> how do you do that in our community? I know you have a wonderful event once a year. We do, we tell do. Tell us a little about that okay. in well, February, I think. So our funding stream is really sort of three-pronged. Um, we receive money from victim services funds, so those are funds that are set aside um, in the general budget from the state and federal government to support victims of crime, like sexual assault victims, domestic violence victims, um, children who have been harmed by either one of those things. So we call those victim services fund, and we write grants um, to the state and the federal government to get that. Okay. Um, and then the second is really local community foundations who support this work. Mm -hmm. We also write applications or sit down with boards that fund agencies like ours to secure that funding on a year-to-year -year basis. And then we have a, um, an annual fund drive and then one fundraising event a year. Okay. So it's really three-pronged for us. Mm -hmm. About 50, almost 55% of our funding is community-based. And the other 45 is is that victim service funding. Um, our fundraiser is called Men Who Cook and we ask about 30 men to step forward and choose a meal, their favorite meal, cook 200 portions and three ounce portions, a tasting portion um, right. of their favorite meal. We sell tickets, we have to ask people to come in and go from station to station in one, on one night. Our event is uh, February 17th this year. Okay, um, or next year. For, yeah, for, sorry, for 18, <laughs> for 18. Yeah. Um, it's a very well attended event. We're so fortunate that people like it and they yes, come out to support us. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's important that men in our community, and the men, I can't speak more highly than the men who support this event in our agency. They just are behind us 100%, and it's important to know that not, not all men are abusers. Abusers are not only men, but it is important that we have a united voice yes. behind us that, that are men, yep. it's primary. Unity is important. So it really is. Well, definitely a deserving agency that, that serves wow, very, very well and is very much dependent upon. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for and having us. speaking with us. And congratulations on the award. Well, thank you. We're honored. Yeah, thanks. Hello and welcome back to Love Where You Live, a production of the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. I'm Betsy Alice, happy to be with you today. I am the um, Executive Director of the Chamber and we have a guest this morning from the Chamber of Commerce, Tammy Groff, who's been with us before, um, but there are some new developments now that I want to talk about with Tammy and let you know about. Um, Tammy is the Workforce Development Director for the Sheboygan County Chamber Welcome, Tammy, to Thank the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, just before we went on the air, I said, Tammy, is it okay if I ask you this really far-flung question? And she said, yes, yeah, she's, she's game. So, I, because it occurred to me that a lot of people really probably don't know what workforce development encompasses, even just from the chamber standpoint, if not from our educators and our employers standpoint. So, <clears throat> you know, if you could, you know, just play with me a little bit here and let's talk about, you know, what that whole spectrum of involvement and connection looks like 
um, where it starts, where it finishes, and, and what we end up with as a, as a county, as employers, as parents, as a community. Sounds so, good. I think um, probably we start with uh, the K-12 mm -hmm. process through actually young professionals and even a little bit beyond. Um, that's probably our biggest focus as far as that professional development, mm -hmm. just developing mm -hmm. the, the talent pipeline um, and connecting the businesses with the students and getting the businesses to work with the um, educators because um, that's that labor market um, information and collaboration and getting the students to know, you know what, they, what jobs are available in our right. area. Um, so it's, it's not only um, helping to prepare them academically um, for, and for their careers, it's also helping them to understand what businesses are located within their very own backyard, all the cool things that our companies um, create, produce, and the amazing opportunities that those students have to connect with these, you know, world-class companies, um, internationally known, right here, so that when they do make that decision to, when they graduate from high school, that they have that opportunity to come back um, if they are, leave the area. And so it's nice little, it's a relationship building and that connection. And I guess that would be my vision moving forward. Mm -hmm is to have that connection so that the students connect before uh, they graduate from high school so that they have those opportunities in mind when they finish whatever degree, whatever schooling, or if they decide even to go straight into the workforce. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, to have those employers, you know, have that available to them as well. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing shift in a way with 3,000 jobs available in our yes. county. Yes. Um, we, as the Chamber of Commerce, need to support our members mm -hmm. in helping to build that pipeline. Absolutely. And really, that's the crux of your department right. in the Chamber. Um, I know, you know, it's, it's about a lot of things. It's about building bridges between educators and businesses. Mm -hmm. um, it's about kind of building that um, that pipeline where it is. where kids from the time they're in fifth grade, you know, have an inkling of what's going on in, in their world and their parents become educated about it too, about all the opportunities. Absolutely. Because we all tend to be very myopic. You know, we, we have our own family, our own career, our own perspective, um, and we want our kids to be exposed to all the opportunities they could have. Well, that's interesting because studies actually have shown that students typically um, enter the same professions as their their families because that's what they know. Mm -hmm. So with the academic and career planning opportunities available through the schools and working with the businesses to provide those opportunities as work-based learning, the students are exposed to more. And then so the chamber, what we do, we are the facilitators of, of many of those opportunities. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, an, a, another thing that I think is, is um, a powerful part of the chamber is the Business Education Partnership Committee. Yes. Um, this, you know, started as a workforce development committee many years ago, but probably four years ago, three years ago, right. it really took a huge leap forward thanks to you yes. and thanks oh, to the leadership of yes. that committee. Absolutely. Um, but it's a, com well, I, I want you to explain it to people because I think it's a great, great way to operate. Well, actually, so the business education uh, partnership is exactly what it na its name implies. So on the education side mm -hmm. of the partnership, we're privileged to have superintendents from five different school districts on the, on the partnership. We have LTC, um, now UW Sheboygan, and Lakeland. On the business side of the partnership, we mm -hmm. have, and just, just to name a few, we have Johnson representatives from Johnsonville, uh, Kohler, Sargento, uh, Old Wisconsin, Kurt G. Joa, Aurora Healthcare. So mm -hmm. there's some, you know, nice diversity um, in from with different levels within those organizations. We have, you know, a general manager of one particular, and then also some HR folks involved with that too. Um, and now that's just the core. So what the, the business education partnership is doing is forming strategic partnerships outside of that. Um, inviting them in because there are so many mm -hmm. um, initiatives taking place that we need to work together on. So we also have the Sheboygan County Job Center 
um, participating with this. We have Great Lakes training. We have uh, the Department of Vocational Rehabilitation. We have Workbound, and we have Junior Achievement working with us. Mm -hmm. And now we have the Commons, which is an entrepreneurial skills accelerator to help our uh, college and high school students to learn those particular skills, which are important whether you're self-employed or right. you're working for a, a company. So. Right, because companies need those intrapreneurs, too. They do, absolutely. So that it's whole really mindset painful. is really a powerful, creative It is, and we're excited thing. to have mm -hmm. them as partners. So, yeah. If we have time today, we'll go back to that a little okay. bit. Otherwise, sure. maybe we'll make the commons a topic of a future show. Sure, that'd be great. Yes. Um, so tell me what's coming up in this next year. What, what is the business education partnership focused on? What do they hope to accomplish? Um, well, the state of Wisconsin, um, they have some requirements for academic and career planning uh, for all schools to be offered to students grades 6 through 12, and that starts with the 2017-18 school year. Now, Sheboygan County has been very proactive in this area and is, mm -hmm. is proactive, but in order to provide those opportunities and for all students within those grade levels, you know, I think the BEP recognized, the Business Education Partnership yes, recognized right. the short term. Yeah, um, as we affectionately call Right, them. that's right, that's <laughs> our, our nickname for them. Yeah. Um, so they recognized that the demands uh, for on everyone's time uh, and resources to provide all these experiences for these students right. was really going to increase. So how could we, um, as, a, as a partnership, reach out to others and to the educators to find out how we can align our resources, bring in strategic partnerships to make things more efficient, effective for students, and maximize the efforts for um, employers who are looking for you know, a workforce? Yeah. So we met with our school counselors from every different school district within Sheboygan County, put together a plan um, that will include uh, financial literacy, employability skills, social skills, entrepreneurial skills, um, on top of the work-based learning and some career exploration, you know, dashed in there too. Uh, so, so at each grade level, yes. they'll have a different set of, of common denominators, Correct. common things they're learning or being exposed to throughout their education. Absolutely. Yes. And that's a huge change. It yes. used to be that our school districts would, you know, they were very effective. They would do things here and do things there. And, you know, I think now the Chamber's role has really been just to facilitate that connection, that bridge. Absolutely. It, it's been a really good bridge. Um, where I think all of us are very excited just to, to roll this out. Um, and mm -hmm. that you'll notice that at the, what we'll be talking about shortly, is the Workforce mm -hmm. Development Summit, and so that's, that plan will be unveiled then. So. so, great segue, mm -hmm. because that is my next question. I would like to hear more about, and our audience would too, um, each year, and this is our third year, yes. hosting the Workforce Development Summit. Uh, and, and I think, you know, everything has led up to this year, which at, in looking at the agenda, which I'd like you to kind of go over briefly, sure. um, I think it's it'll be the most powerful. So share with us a little bit of what's going to go on there, if you would. Uh, well, it's on September 26th, Blue Harbor. Uh, we start at 7:30 in the morning with uh, registration. The program itself starts at 8:30, though. One of the things that we wanted to bring in is we, and I'm really excited, we have the chief economist from the Department of Workforce Development to talk about some labor market trends that's going to take us at least through 2024, maybe a little bit beyond. Um, labor market yes. trends are really important to help our employers as they're planning uh, mm -hmm. for the future, for their future workforce, but educators can also utilize this information because it helps them to help their students to with their academic and career planning, which obviously has become right. a really huge focus. So we wanted to make sure that to provide that. Um, we also are privileged to have the State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Dr. Mm -hmm. Tony Evers. He's going to come and give us a brief overview of the academic and career planning requirements that um, the state is um, if putting into effect this year. Um, and then we're going to have some representatives from the Business Education Partnership uh, roll out the plan as it pertains to those academic and career plans and how we are going to maximize these efforts, align the resources to really help 
um, businesses, and particularly, I would think, the small and medium-sized businesses uh -huh. who just don't have the time to go out and you know participate in all these work-based learning opportunities. There's so, right. so many fires are putting out, trying to um, get workers today and put today's fire out. They don't necessarily have the luxury of having a person on staff that can work directly with the schools. So there are things or are options available and opportunities that we want to make sure that they understand that we're here to help them and mm -hmm. they can still be a part of it. Um, so if they haven't attended this before, this would be the year to do absolutely, that. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. I think, I think regardless of who you are, there's definitely something new to learn at this. Okay, so quickly, we have three minutes left. All right. I want to talk about briefly about the awards that you're going oh. to be giving out this year, um, the new awards. Okay, we have the uh, Educator of the Year Award and the Friend of Education of the Year Award that will be presented by Dr. Evers. Um, the reason we wanted to do this is, again, Sheboygan County is just filled with so many wonderful educators um, and so many people in the community working on behalf of education, um, business education partnerships, and mentoring students. So we wanted to se separate the two, though, to recognize, you know, everyone has a favorite teacher who's out there doing things above and beyond the call of duty, mm -hmm. whether it's through instruction, through the programs that they've done, Field or trips. through mentor. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing with the friend of education. Um, they could be doing actually the same types of things, um, not necessarily mm -hmm. defined as an educator, but out there teaching students, whether it's how to weld, um, whether it's a, a, a mentoring program or, mm -hmm. or what have you. They're out there making a difference, basically, yeah. um, to make students successful after life, mm -hmm. in life after graduation. So. Yeah, which is a big it's huge. responsibility. It is. So the more that we can direct them or connect them, make the resources easy for them to find and participate with, um, I think, you know, Inspire Sheboygan County yes. is also in a whole other topic, but a right. wonderful bridge for our educators and our businesses um, to make those valuable connections. And, and you're right about small and medium-sized businesses, because I think to this point it's been more focused on larger employers, Correct. Um, kind of a pilot portion. Yes. So now I think it's ready, and I, I would encourage all of our members to at least explore what's going on there. Um, so that's on the 23rd, 26th, 26th yes. September 26th, mm -hmm. from 7.30 when breakfast starts right. in the morning until Til noon. So it's a half noon. a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, as always, we are having facilitated conversation because that's the, the, the entire premise of the summit is mm -hmm. to be able to talk to each other and to network and to share best practices. Excellent. And I, you know, have been privileged to attend both of the others and was very impressed with the level of of uh, conversation and the excitement around primarily getting together and mm -hmm. having these discussions because you also have people sit at pretty mixed tables. We do. So, yep, we purposely put, um, we want to make sure that educators and um, uh, HR professionals get together at the tables. And so, well, Tammy, thank you for thank being you. with us today and bringing the Workforce Development Summit to the forefront. Um, I would encourage all of you to go to Sheboygan.org and, and take a look at that event. If you can possibly attend, I know that you will learn some valuable things that day, regardless of, of whether you're a business person or an educator. So thank you so much thank for you. your work and for being here. Thank you, Betsy.